Hello everyone, after a long week of lots of networking, we've finally made it to the actual conference of Chiang Mai SEO. Thursday and Friday, the actual conference days, I've been hanging out in Chiang Mai for two weeks and already got a huge amount to implement, some of which I've already shared with my email list. So make sure you get on the Ranking Revelations newsletter because that's where I share some of the next level, the top 10% that I can't share publicly on YouTube, either because it's too good or maybe it's a little bit shady and not exactly white hat. Uh, so there's always these sub top 10% experiments I'm running in the background, normally based on some high level insights I've received, but you've got to question everything you, you hear at places like this, because so much of the SEO discourse comes from people who are actually selling things. So although SEO is completely crowdsourced, do remember that some of the big gurus in the niche, yeah, myself included, actually selling something. In my case, I'm obviously talking a lot about links because I have a link building agency. So wherever you hear anything, whatever you hear, do make sure just to go and test it for your niche because it might be it's just completely irrelevant for your niche. But either way, sign up for Ranking Revelations and you'll be the first to know whenever I get some new insights that I'm testing. But today we're looking at a new free Chrome extension called SERP Sonar. Now SERP Sonar uses a huge amount of data, provides you all sorts of insights. My main concern was actually significance. So there are plenty of tools out there that will give you no end of data. But what you really need is what's it to me? <laughs> what is the significance of this data? So, you know, those people are raving about the on-page tool Quora, which I fully agree is very advanced. It's got a lot of good insights. But I still choose to use Surfer because basically it's easy for my clients. It's easy for my team. It's a much more usable product. And what you've got to remember is you don't necessarily, depends on your niche, but you don't necessarily have to be this next level of optimization, you mainly just need to implement. So if you're not implementing, then you're missing out on 100%. So even if you implement with a tool that's only 80, 90% as good as competitor, you're still going to be far ahead of as just not implementing. So you want to remove any uh, friction with actually implementing. So that's why I stick with Surfer. It works for me. And yes, there's tools out there that could be much better. But ultimately, if you stay in that state of just testing out different tools and never actually implementing anything, then you're not going to get very far. It's much better if you, you choose your tools and you actually implement to massively increase your output and then that's how you win. You're going to win. So in my case, I always say just write great content, build great links, and you're going to have a really good SEO business. So with Set Sonar, that was my first impression. Huge amount of data. What do I actually do with it? But my favorite use case for it so far, and remember it's a completely free tool, is the fact that it actually gives you insights into how Google rewrites titles and meta descriptions. So just to clarify for any beginners, what you see on an actual Google result, if we search best business credit card, I'm in Thailand at the moment, but it won't be that different. So what we have here is the meta title and the meta description. Now, if you're on WordPress and you're using a tool like Yoast or Rank Math, then you can go in and set these. And most agencies, when they start with you, they make a big thing about, we're gonna rewrite all your titles and rewrite your message descriptions. Because a lot of the time, a big big corporate website that's a bit slow, hasn't really been looked at for five years. That's, uh, that's some low hanging fruit. As in, you might have a page that wasn't even targeting the right keyword. You fix the keyword targeting. So stuff the keyword a few times on the page, update the meta title and the H1, and suddenly you get a big rankings boost. But, most people who watch my channel have already got quite a high level of SEO knowledge, so I want to go further than that. And a lot of clients who actually come back to me talk about how, you know, we've already got these meta descriptions, how are we going to optimize them? It's a very common common discourse that basically one of your first steps with SEO should be optimizing your meta titles and meta descriptions. I've recently got a new SEO manager to help handle the the clients we're onboarding at the moment. And there's always that concern of... um. And one of the first questions was, what do we do about message descriptions? Because we provide content with our link building service, because if you don't have the right content and your site's not optimized, then the links aren't going to have any effect. We only want to build links that have effect. Therefore, we actually include that content optimization in the first month. But honestly, my answer was, I don't pay too much attention to message descriptions because they are rewritten anyway. So I've spoken to the founder of SERP Sonar, and 80% of mess descriptions are actually rewritten. And about 40% of titles are rewritten. 
But again, like I say, you've got to be very careful about generic SEO insights and SEO knowledge, because what applies to one niche might not apply to your niche. If someone else is dominating the dog food niche and you're doing credit cards or Forex, then the chances are your search results are going to be very different. Then you have different geos, things like that. So SERP Sonar actually makes this really easy. So I say completely free plugin from Chrome. If you want actual keyword search volume data, you can plug it into keywords everywhere. Now that Ahrefs has increased its prices and introduced usage limits, some people are looking for more affordable tools. And keywords everywhere might just be one of those. So if we look at best credit cards, we can then run a scan with SERP Sonar. When you install it, obviously make sure you actually pin it to the taskbar. And you can see it's running a scan right now. So SERP Sonar looks specifically at search engine results pages and it will scan nearly the complete top 100. Rarely makes the full 100, but you can see here it's done 95. Now the main use case for SERP Sonar is what's called the keyword golden ratio. Now this is quite a divisive topic. The keyword golden ratio is basically the idea that you should basically, if you find, it's a method of finding low competition keywords. And the idea is that the number of pages that have the exact keyword in the title should be in a certain proportion to the total searches available. Now what this basically means is how many pages in the top 100 actually optimizing for that specific keyword rather than just ranking by accident. So if we do all in title best business credit cards then we can see we've got 5,340 results. With this, mod this advanced search operator all in title we're only looking for the, the number of pages that have got this exact keyword in the title. So you can see all of these best business credit cards, best small business credit cards. You can have other variations in there, but best and business credit cards, you get the idea. And now the actual ratio says that if this number is particularly low and lower than the search volume, I can give you the uh, exact ratio. I can't honestly remember it right now. I don't really use it anymore. But the fundamental theory is if we look at the total market available, so number of searches per month versus how many bloggers are directly targeting that keyword, that gives you an idea of how competitive it is. And it's very divisive. Some people say it's complete nonsense. Others absolutely swear by it. I often say that SEO is very tribal. We have the sort of niche site community where you might build a site all about pet fish and fish tanks, whereas then you've got the more technical SEO crowd who are more about often doing smaller websites, creating topical maps and dominating a particular affiliate product. And uh, they all work. You can, in every tribe, you can find really good examples of people who've done really, really well. So you don't want to be arrogant about this. All methods have their ups and downs. Keyword golden ratio, I have used this before, uh, especially back in my corporate life in the day job, where corporate superiors couldn't really understand how writing blog posts equated to getting traffic. But if you give them this shiny object, the keyword golden ratio, suddenly something clicks and they're saying, that's interesting. We want to know more about that. And I've definitely had success with that ratio. Keywords that fit the ratio, they do seem to do very well. So it's only a metric. I'm not saying it's the best metric in the world, but it can be successful. So what Sonar aims to do is actually make the keyword golden ratio easy. Because rather than having to manually calculate it, you can simply fire up the report and then it runs a scan. It doesn't take long and it gives you all this data on keywords in title, exact keyword in title, somewhere. It does actually give you the keyword golden ratio metric. But I don't have it plugged into keywords everywhere because I don't use it. So here we are, keyword golden ratio currently says NA, but if I hooked it up to keywords everywhere, it would give me the keyword golden ratio. So I could just blast through and get keywords like that rather than having to manually calculate it from this. But the, the fact it does 100 pages is actually really interesting in terms of correlational SEO. So tools like Surfer, they tend to only look at the top 10 results. This goes much deeper and you can set it to either do all results, 50, 20 or the top 10. Pretty useful is actually the average words on page. So if we look at the full 100, then the average words per page is 6,000 for best business credit cards. If I now set this to 50, it goes up to 7,600. 20 is 8,360. And then 10 is 11,000. So really interesting to 
get some of these true correlations where whenever we do an audit for a potential client, we generally use the Surfer audit tool where we can basically take your keyword and we'll look at the top 10 and work out how in line you are with the top 10. But the fact that this goes much further and looks at the full 100, it might not be looking at the NLPs and semantics like our Surfer audit does, but just basics like word count and titles, things like that is pretty interesting. But the best bit is when we get to reports. So if we open this report, we then get a huge amount of data. Now, again, what I really want to clarify here is I don't want too much data. I just want the actionable data that I can actually implement to get changes. So we've got percentage of pages with schema. That's pretty interesting. It's only one type of, well, it's only schema in general, as opposed to specific types. You know, loads of people use FAQ schema, which has now been downplayed. These days, I'm looking more at things like person schema, author schema, same as tags. We have types per page. Pages with user generated content. That's pretty interesting. Currently showing a zero. Do I believe that? I'm not too sure. Now, if we go to the SERP and keyword detail report, you might notice that if you search a any keyword, you'll find Google actually bolds different words in the meta description. And in this case, it doesn't actually seem to be doing it. But if you have a, a less exact match keyword, you might find related keywords and synonyms being highlighted in the meta description. That tells us something interesting, that Google is associating other words it understands that certain words can represent other words. A lot of Google, when it comes to semantics, is actually quite basic, but the fact it understands synonyms, that's very useful. So we can optimize further by looking not just at our main keyword, but the other synonyms. We know we can use synonyms, but what's clear about this is that Google can actually form these associations, so we might as well optimize for those associations. Now, looking at all this data, what really stands out to me is that this is the kind of report that you get from a tool like Cora, which is really expensive. And SERP Sonar is completely free. Even if you plug it into keywords everywhere, it's not going to be costing you that much money. My inclination, whenever I see a huge batch of data like this, I would basically train ChatGPT to take account of some of these metrics. And the fact is a lot of these correlations are the kind of things you'll get from a tool like Surfer. But again, this is free. So we've got average image count, average word count, I probably would run several reports and actually look at top 10 versus top 50, potentially versus the top 100s, and basically look at that chart of what are the top 10 doing that, that's above the average or different to the average across the top 100. So in this case, we've got very long words count. We can also see the active ad networks, so you can get an idea of what your competitors are actually advertising with. It will even give you affiliate networks. No. This is probably my favorite report with SERP Sonar because we know that Google rewrites titles and misdescriptions, but the question is how badly, especially for my niche, how long should I actually put into optimizing my title and meta descriptions when it's probably going to rewrite it anyway? So in this case, for Best Business Credit Card, we've got a 90% rewrite of the meta description and a 20% of title rewrites. Now, I think, again, I'm... Skewing the data a bit because I'm in Thailand. Sorry, you've been blocked. Attention required Cloudflare. That's not accurate. So a bit of feedback there. So what we're looking at here is the actual keyword that's been presented versus the original page title. So that's the meta title displaying in the code. And then we've got the H1 that's on the page. So this can be confusing if you're not as advanced into this. So the H1 is the main title you display on the web page that's visible to users. Your meta title, in this case, the original page title, that's the, the tag that you apply that you want to display on Google. So you put that in a tool like Rank Math or Yoast. And then SERP title or description rewrite, this is what's actually showing on the search result. So sometimes quite minor, but just look here. Best business credit cards for November 2023. Best business credit cards of November 2023. So we always want to save Google work because... Everything Google does, it has to be done at massive scale and at a low cost. So just by changing this title from best credit cards of November 2023 to best business credit cards for November 2023, we could save Google a little bit of work that might actually go a little bit higher up, potentially. It's only a small variance here, but some of these can vary quite widely. 
Now currently we're only looking at the top 10 results. Let's go back and look at the top 100. Now we can set this to all results. So again, we go to report. So here we are, scan depth, first 98 results. Page titles, Google changed or rewrote is 20%. Meta descriptions, 88%. Active ad networks, we've got double click, Amazon ads, Critio, double click. So a great way to find other potential advertising partners. Active affiliate networks on page. This currently says zero. I highly doubt that. I suspect credit card affiliate programs are one of the best paying. So I'm not sure if I believe that data. Maybe I'm doing something wrong. And back to the title delta. So here's a good one. Best business credit cards of November 2023 upgraded points. So they're clearly trying to be a bit more clickbaity, and it's been rewritten to the 10 best business credit cards in November 2023. So again, I think these are more, I wouldn't say these are the highest impact things you could do, but if you've tried everything else, then it might well be worth using a free tool like this and simply swapping out your current meta title for the meta title that Google is actually displaying. Again, much simpler, much more truncated. Top five business credit cards in Australia 2023. Is your business using them? Top five best business credit cards in Australia for 2023. So much simpler version that's actually going to Google. Now I'm in Thailand, so I think that's why I'm getting more Australia. So I suggest you use a VPN or something like that if you're targeting a geo that's not your own, because clearly this has a big impact. Going back to keyword golden ratio, it says all entitled suppliers 66%. Now, this is what I really like when a tool can give you a metric, but actually tell you why it matters. In other words, what do I do about this? So it says, if the all entitled supply is under 20%, that may imply a limited number of pages targeting that keyword. So again, if you don't have a big budget, plug this into keywords everywhere, get the actual search volumes coming through, and you can identify lower competition opportunities. Again, schema, all very useful. So percent of pages with schema, 68%. Average number of schema types. It'd be great to get an aggregate of that in terms of what schema are they actually using because no one really cares about FAQ schema anymore. But I think as EAT is going to be more and more prevalent with AI content, suddenly things like author schema, same as tags, it's probably going to get a lot more important. So cert word prevalence report, that's what I was saying about the bold words in meta description. So this really does look like a sort of surfer correlational type report where you're getting an idea... 10 years ago, five years ago, people would just say best business credit cards should just focus on best business credit cards. Actually, and that's the big shift that we're seeing in SEO at the moment, this idea that we're moving away from keywords and more into semantics and entities. So by reverse engineering Google search results, we can get an idea of the underlying knowledge graph, which is Google's way of understanding how the world works. We've also got related search words, which includes the bolded words. So again, there's nothing here you can't get necessarily from the actual search results, but it's all just aggregated in one place very quickly. And like I say, it's free. So to get these kinds of uh, data insights, previously you'd have to have a tool like Surfair. Now with things like ChatGPT, it's much easier, and this is certainly helping with that. So it's early days for this tool. I think there's a lot of potential there, and it could be a really useful tool for someone with no budget. Obviously, SEO and any other business it's always that debate between time versus money. So if you've got time but not much money, something like SERP Sonar could be really useful to you. If you've got money but no time, then head over to seojesus.com and click on apply. We have our high quality link building service, but building links doesn't have any impact if your content's not up to scratch and your website's not working. So we include free consulting and we help you sort out those content silos in the first place, all done for you as early as we can so the links we build give you the maximum results. So head over to seojesus.com, join the Ranking Revelations newsletter if you don't have budget and you just want to learn, but if you're ready to act, ready to implement, and ready to scale with a budget, then go to apply. Places are limited, so we'll get back to you if we have space. Those places do sell out pretty quickly.